Welcome everybody to the Single and Stiletto Show. I'm Suzanne Oshima and I'm a matchmaker and dating coach at Dream Bachelor and Bachelorette. I'm also the founder of Single and Stilettos. I'm so excited because today we have on our show Dwayna Welch and she's the author of Love Factually, 10 Proven Steps from I Wish to I Do. And today we're talking about dealing with dating burnout. And I know everybody goes through this at some point in the process. So don't worry, ladies, if you're going through it, we're going to help you through this. So but before we jump into it, Dwayne, I would love for you to tell our audience a little bit about you and what made you write this book, Love Factually. Sure, Suzanne. Well, thanks for having me on again. Uh, I have a PhD in developmental psychology, but my interest over the years has become relationship psychology, and that's for a very personal reason, which was that I was not very good at romantic relationships. Um, as someone told me earlier today when I put out a call on Facebook for various things, she said her picker was broken. That was my problem. And so I wanted to know how to fix that. Because social science, I was using it to help people's lives. And I thought, well, maybe I could use it to help me in my life. And I did. And after that happened, I started getting clients. And eventually, it turned into a blog and a book. So um, basically, I write books that I myself needed. You know, it's funny because I hear a lot of people say that's how they got into this is they're having problems in their own life and, and you solved it. So it definitely works. Well, this is great. So I know you have three tips on how to deal with dating burnout. And let's just, I want to preface this with ladies, you're not alone. Everybody goes through dating burnout at some point and there's great ways that you can deal with it. So don't feel like you're alone in this whole process. So Duena, what's the first tip on how they can deal with this? Well, kind of the tip before all the tips is something you just alluded to, which is you need to practice some self-compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, it is normal to here are some, some just verbatim things that people write to and tell me that sh they're signs of burnout, but people usually don't recognize that these are signs of burnout. And I really want those of you in the audience, I want you to tune into these because these are signs that you're about to give up or that you're about to give up and tell yourself that you're not giving up, which is even worse, actually. Like, you know, do or do not do, there's no try. So give up or don't don't be in that middle ground so here's some of those things um if it's meant to be it'll happen so i should just stop looking there's a word for people who think that and that word is single um sure i'd accept the right partner if they came along but they have to find me i'm done making an effort another burnout sign or i'm afraid love won't happen for me no matter what i do feeling that you're hopeless that you're ineffective that nothing you can do will make a difference these are big red flags for a burnout and i really hate for perfectly wonderful people to burn out and give up when they could have the love of their lives. And so um, kind of my first big tip is to check your thinking. Use, use some mental floss. Um, a lot of times people who are on the verge of burnout, they think things like all the good ones are taken. And I want to start by acknowledging that, okay, yeah, some of the good ones are taken. Of it's course. You know, it's absolutely true that, um, the people who are on the mating market again and again and again and again and again, they tend to share a certain attachment style called avoidant, and those folks are harder to match up than others, but that's a slice of the pie. It's not the whole pie. You're not looking for a truckload of perfect partners. You're looking for one, and there is at least one out there, and if you apply yourself, and that's key, if you apply yourself, you will meet them. So the first step is really to, to check that thinking that's so inaccurate to understand that there are good partners and that if you keep at it you are very likely it is statistically probable that you will meet fall in love with and get with one of them do you think that um some people because i find some people will say certain things that are actually not true do you think people will say certain things um to make them have I guess I don't want to say excuse, but I guess a reason why it's not working for them. Do you know what I mean? I'll give you an example. So um, I have I live in New York City and a lot of the women here will say, well, the reason why I can't meet the right man is because there's more single women here in New York than there are single men. And which is true, but in a city of 8 million people, that's ridiculous because they're like you said, you just need one. So 
So do you find that to be true, that sometimes people will look for a reason or an excuse why they can't meet the run? Yes, I find that that's very common. Um, and statistically, it's true that if you're in an environment with um, 80 single women for every 60 single men, mm -hmm. Um, that not all of those women are going to be partnered up. But I want to emphasize, first of all, some of those women aren't looking. Second of all, some of those women are using strategies that aren't effective. If you're using a dating coach that's relying on science and evidence-based coaching and who kind of gets where you're at and can keep you motivated and you're learning fact-based information, then you have a huge leg up on the competition. Yeah, it's a competition, but most of them aren't even looking there. So, yeah, if you're doing the things that work, it's going to work. Right. Yeah, that's very true. So what's another tip on how a woman can deal with dating burnout? Well, you need to challenge those inaccurate thoughts with what I call noticing and redirecting. Notice and redirect. If, if you think, for example, um, well, looking for love is something that only desperate people do. Or wanting love is a sign of desperation. Mm -hmm. Well, look around you. I mean, didn't your friends mostly look for love? Most of them did not find their spouses accidentally. Most of us put a lot of effort into that, actually. Right. And in couples where one person wasn't looking, the other person was. You know, I mean, you find two people who just happen to find each other. They either worked together or they met in college or something. You know, that's really, that's not the normal way that people get together. Right now, the single most common way that people meet is online and they're there to find a mate. It's not accidentally that they meet. So, uh, you know, again, challenge your, your thinking with reality. Just keep pulling it back to what's real. Don't, and, and, Unacknowledged thought is a thought that has the power to run rampant and undermine your plan. Right. So your thoughts and challenge them. So that's the, the second big tip. All right. Well, that's a good tip. So what's the third tip? The third tip is, in the words of Nike, just do it. And it's so, funny because Duana lives in Oregon now where Nike is headquartered. So. Yes, they are. <laughs> Well, so what do you mean by just do it? Everyone out there who's dealing with dating burnout is probably going, yeah, easy for you to say I'm burnt out. So can you give us some tips on how they can just do it? Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge women. I hear you. When I was single and dating, I had a diabetic toddler in tow. And uh, I met a number of men who weren't very interested in that scenario. And I met others who said they were and turned out not to be. And I got my heart broken repeatedly. So I'm not, you know, kind of preaching at you from the Mount Olympus of everything went well in Dwayne Welch's life. A lot of things went wrong, and I, I get it. I felt that. But here's the thing. I also went through a long period of having to look for a job. And had I at any point said, well, if it's right, the right job will find me, I would still be jobless, I think. That is true. It's funny that you use that analogy because I actually use that a lot in getting out there and dating. And I say, you know, when it comes to finding a job, you would do whatever it takes. You would contact headhunters, you would go online, you would network, you would contact friends and family. You would do everything and not stop until you found the right job. So why is it any different when it comes to finding a man? Because theoretically speaking, a man should actually last longer than your job, hopefully, if the marriage lasts for a long time. And you may go through a couple different jobs, but hopefully you won't go through a couple different husbands. So I think that we need to put as much emphasis in finding the right man as we do in finding the right job. Oh, I wish we could do a whole episode on that because, um, you know, the right job is not going to usually make you all that happy. Um, it will create some financial stability and some predictability in your life if it's a good job. But research shows that the single factor in adult life that makes people happy, healthy, wealthy, live longer, um, and have better outcomes for their kids is not their job. It's their, it's their spouse. So this is something that deserves more of your time, actually, than a job search. It is worthy of your best effort. And so just do it. Look, don't wait to feel like doing it. Do it and your feelings will follow. We know that from a lot of experiments in psychology that when people start doing things, their emotions alter after they begin doing it. Most days I don't feel like getting up and walking four miles. But, but you do. Yeah, but then I start doing it and I think, oh, look at this. I'm in the rain again because it's Oregon. No, <laughs> 
I enjoy it with my rain gear on. Well, that that is true. And I think that's a really good point is to just do it because it's true. I'm a really bad procrastinator. And so when I finally actually just take the steps to do it, even though it's painful at first, it's like, oh, I feel better because you start to feel like it's not so weighing on you and it's not so difficult. So these have been some great tips. So Duana, please tell our audience how they can find you and your book. Absolutely. So you can find me and my book at love factually with an f dot co that's love factually dot co you can get a free chapter and you can see how to learn more about me and maybe email me sometime awesome well ladies go to her website and find her book because i promise you won't be disappointed Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the Single and Stiletto Show. Our show is available both in video format and podcast format. If you'd like to view the videos, go to singleandstilettos.com. If you'd like to get the podcast, you can download it from iTunes. If you'd like to get our free ebook on the three secrets guaranteed to attract any man based on scientific research, just click right here on the video or go to singleandstilettos.com.